Today we are working on some alkaline corrosion on a WPC89 MPU. This one goes into a fun house. I've already installed in VRAM and replaced the filter cap at C31 and the header at J210. And somebody had already taken a stab at replacing U20 where there was some alkaline corrosion. Unfortunately, they didn't get all of it. So I had to remove, what is this, U16, I think, one of the LM339s. And as you can see, I've soldered, I'm, I've sanded this down to bare copper and I'm now examining it to see how many traces that I need to rebuild. So each of these pins, this is pins one, two, this is 14 and 13, they connect to one of these 10K pull-up resistors. So this trace looks okay, but I'll buzz it to make sure. This one's definitely fractured, definitely fractured. And this one I can make work if I use a SIP socket. This trace that comes down from the lower left battery holder is ground and fortunately that is a redundant trace on the back side of the board so this trace being open doesn't have any ramifications at all this one's got to be rebuilt and this one here has got a very tiny fracture in it alkaline tends to gather up and attack the intersection of a copper trace with the solder pad so we're gonna clean up this just a little bit more then I'm going to conformal coat it because I need to do that before I put the chip socket in and then I'm going to put the chip socket in and then I'm going to rebuild the traces from these locate the ones that I pointed out before now I'm looking at this I'm thinking as I'm speaking and I'll probably rebuild these on top of the board so put some uh, trace wire from this location for instance to this location it prevents you from having jumpers on the back and it just looks a little cleaner, so I like to do that sometimes. Be back in a couple hours. And we are back after I have cleaned up the corrosion in this area, and I have run one, two, three, four jumpers on the component side of the board. And there's only one more jumper left to run, and that one I'm gonna have to run on the solder side of the board and that is from this pin of the LM339 to this leg of the 1k uh, resistor that's in the circuit. Now some people try to run a small trace wire from the through hole to and tack solder it to the trace. That's in my opinion not a great way to do that because tack soldering anything is generally not a great way to do things. It's best to go from leg to hole or leg to leg or some kind of uh, object to object, but that doesn't include traces. Here's the back side of the board trace. I like to banjo string them between two points. And here we are with the MPU that needed four traces on the component side of the board re repaired. And there is one jumper on the back side of the board also. I tend to banjo string those as seen in the picture that I just rolled in. I just think it's better to not have a bunch of loose wire hanging off. I've installed NVRAM, replaced C31, J210, standard fare sockets. And now we are ready to test. Oops edges and today is Saturday I'm gonna work on something to help me with this test right there that was the diagonal so we know all the switches are working also whoops I can I should start doing this I can sh the coin door switches also can be tested with this rig nice so let's make sure Oh, I got crazy fingers here all of a sudden. Let's make sure that the solenoids are being driven, just like the other board. This one has, there are solenoid drives for eight, or for every eight devices, there's a drive signal that goes from the MPU to the driver board. So there's one, two, three, this one's usually flashers, and then there's one for the GI also. So 
we know that those are all working correctly. Let me advance to general illumination. And we can make sure GI signals are getting over there, and they are. And we can do lamps and flashers at the same time. And that ensures that the signals are getting from the MPU board to the driver board. This is a dash one driver board. There is an interesting uh, phenomenon that occurs. These 4N25 opto couplers sense when a flipper button is pressed and send a signal back through the ribbon to the MPU for switches 11 and 12. And sometimes that befuddles people because you can take these switches off the bottom of the MPU. And if one of those 4N25s is shorted, it will still report switch 11 or 12 as closed. So this board is good to go. I thank you for sending it. I think you're going to enjoy it. I'm going to put the Funhouse ROM back in here. I could not test it with the Funhouse ROM, but I'll make sure it boots uh, because Funhouse is an alphanumeric display. Thanks again.